my name is Tatiana Kolovu. Thank you for participating in the conversation regarding the Global Foundations Corps at the Kelly School of Business. I'm a faculty member in uh, business communication and professional skills. And my name is Luke Leftwich, and I'm the director of the undergraduate program in the Kelly School of Business. And I was lucky enough to be one of the trip leaders uh, for the Greece class with Professor Kolovu. I'm Professor Roberto Garcia, Young Jin Kim, Distinguished Clinical Professor of International Business. I'm also the director of the Center for International Business Education and Research, and I'm a faculty member in the man Management and Entrepreneurship Department here at the Kelly School of Business. I'm Tia Trueblood, director of Kelly International Programs for the undergraduate program. My name is Laurie Cole Glacier, and I'm an associate director in the Kelly undergraduate program. I work with student experience. And my name is Amanda Carls. I'm the Assistant Director for Academic Advising, and I work with students from freshman year to senior year. Um, I was not lucky enough to be a part of the planning committees. However, uh, since the um, core has been implemented, I have been uh, on numerous trips with our students and with our various professors, and I'm hoping to offer some different perspectives on, uh, on the different programs that we've offered and uh, what that looks like uh, in comparison to our time together in Greece. Sure. I'm on the faculty side of the Global Foundations Corps, and I was lucky enough to be, oh, I don't know, maybe unlucky, it was a long-term assignment. But when we formed the committee to start looking at the creation of the core, I sat back and said, let me go see maybe if this is possible. Could we offer eight weeks of understanding a culture from the business standpoint, from the legal standpoint, the whole past analysis, and then could we go there? So my first test uh, course was in 2011, where I took 20 students with one uh, professional staff assisting me. And since then, I have taken five trips, and we've gone mainstream. We have the Global Foundations course. But the first, I think, two or three years were uh, a testing ground before we, as I said, went mainstream. Global Foundation Score has been in, in place for three years now. Correct. Right? So that's right. So the first two years, I did that um, a little separate. And then from the program's point of view, um, my first introduction to the Global Foundation Score was actually uh, near uh, the point of time in which we were going to implement it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I was the director of admissions, so I was excited to have mm. this very unique experience that was built into the curriculum uh, so that our students could have um, an experience on the ground uh, with uh, a professor who was an expert within the region. Uh, but many of our students cannot afford an entire semester mm -hmm. abroad. They can't afford to be away from their, um, uh, whether maybe it's an internship type of an experience, maybe they're uh, in athletics, maybe their, um, uh, their position within Greek housing will not allow them to be gone mm -hmm. for an entire semester. So to have as a part of our portfolio an experience which allowed students to be able to study for an entire semester learning about the politics, the history, the economics, uh, communication uh, mm -hmm. within a particular culture, but then to take that to the next level and not just experience that, um, that culture in that country via a book or a video, but to actually go on the ground and see um, all of the things that they've learned about within that coursework and be able to practice it and be able to um, and to be able to just ultimately see that which they haven't seen before mm -hmm. um, allowed me as the director of admissions also in charge of recruitment at the time to be able to uh, go to the market with a very unique product that is, is in essence inimitable because we have built it into our curriculum, right. and many of our peers are not able to do that. It's, it's a tough thing to pull off, and I can say on the faculty side, to try to expose students to a different culture, you could do it through a book, but it's so much better when you do the studying first and then you go and you live it. For me, I know I've been successful if they are asking the right questions, and you were there when they say, your students are so professional and they're so well prepared, because we try to get them to ask educated questions, to build rapport mm -hmm. in their way they ask questions, they do research, they're prepared. So um, I always say building cross-cultural intelligence is not knowing all the answers, but it's knowing how to write or to ask the right questions. So from the perspective of the students, I think they make us proud when, yeah. whenever they, they cross the, the borders and they show their passports. It's really cool. So the cultural and political is incredibly important because 
wherever you're working, the world is becoming more global. And so at some point in your career, you're going to be working with diverse teams, with global teams, even if you're not working for a multinational corporation. And for the true success of a business, it's important to know how to bring those very different views together to put together a successful product, make your project successful, and um, promote the business. But on the other hand, I think the global core is very important for helping students understand ethics in business. As an international business professor, I've been very involved in the Global Foundations core. I currently teach D270, the global business environment, a course which I enjoy very much and one which I helped create. I've also um, taught 271, which is global business analysis, and that one involved doing business in Latin America. Right. And as you know, you and I uh, traveled abroad in 272 for uh, the doing business in Peru as a global business um, immersion course. Yeah, so on my end, working in Kelly International Programs, I'm serving as an advisor for students who are thinking about taking these courses, um, and also working on the administrative end as we're preparing for the study tour. So um, in advance of the study tour, I attended your class in regards mm -hmm. to Peru and got to know all of the students, and then also arranged the logistics for the study tour, so the flight, the hotel, um, and, and then we worked together and collaborated on some of the business visits that the students would do on site. Um, I was lucky, lucky enough, of course, to travel with you and with the students uh, to Peru and help sort of manage um, the study tour on the ground so that um, you could focus on the academic piece uh, while we were on site in Lima. The thing I remember most about D270 is it was a sea of people and yet Garcia, who was my professor, pointed me out and actually sought me out after class to encourage me to continue to pursue global education and how, the importance of the global core. And the thing that D270 really teaches you is how to understand business in a global environment. So when I went on to take my other classes, I already knew what approach to look at it through. And I had a different perspective and a different lens. So when I began at Kelly, it was in January 2012, and this was before the Global Foundations Corps had been rolled out, which was coming in fall 2012. So I was one of the first advisors to be learning about the Global Foundations Corps and the exciting new curriculum it would bring for our incoming group of students in that fall semester. So from the very beginning, I was excited about what this would mean for our new incoming students. What was your involvement in the Global Foundation's core planning and implementation? So I'm in my 10th year here at the Kelly School right now and started as an academic advisor and then very quickly um, shifted my work to working with international programs. And so for some time, um, I served as our manager of short-term international programs. So I essentially worked with the predecessor of mm -hmm. um, short-term study programs uh, before the implementation of the Global Foundation's core. And so at the time that uh, a task force was conceiving the new curriculum for the 2012 degree, I was serving as the director of international programs here. And so my work was primarily focused on um, implementing the logistics piece of uh, the short-term study tours that would accompany our, our courses in the core. And so um, we were able to use a lot that we had learned in um, our prior work with short-term programs. But that was on a much smaller scale. At that time, we were working with about three programs that we were sending away over spring break, a max of, say, 45, 50 students. And all of a sudden, we sort of took on this ambitious goal of sending um, nearly 200 students abroad the first year. Well, you recruit students. And this is kind of our special sauce. With, yeah. uh, with So do you want to speak any more to that? Because Well, certainly, certainly. Um, in terms of working with our prospects, um, specifically students who are high achieving in high school and have aspirations to do any and everything when they look mm -hmm. at what your offerings are, your portfolio needs to be broad. Um, it's not just the offering of X272, it's the series of courses and the series of knowledge in essence that they ascertain um, as part of the, the G Core, as part of the mm -hmm. Global Core, that helps them as they prepare for the, in essence, the signature experience of I Core. Mm -hmm. If you look at our students prior to the existence of G Core and you look at our students after, 
you can just see the difference as they work with their teams. Mm -hmm. This is a team-based curriculum. Um, almost 20% of our students come from another country. Many of our students have not been introduced to somebody from China, to, to somebody from India or South Korea. And when they start working in teams together, after being introduced to something like the Global Core, you see how different that interaction is. You see understanding, you see curiosity, you see innovation that would not have happened prior to mm -hmm. understanding the, uh, the value of diversity, the value of different thought, the value of a global perspective. And as I watch our students progress through their junior and senior year, having that knowledge that we have been able to instill within them in the global core, you're seeing the effects of that in the projects mm -hmm. they create. Uh, and as they head into the market, our students are placing at a significantly higher rate uh, each year, and mm -hmm. they are marketable. The G Core is a huge component of that. That's so cool. Um, for me, as I said, because I was on the committee, I did the sort of test drive on the 272 course. But I remember distinctly after the second year, I had a colleague. I'm in business communication and professional skills, and one of my colleagues has spent a significant amount of her years in Germany. So she was very interested in offering a similar course, and I suggested to her that she offers a 271, which is similar to a business focus on a country without the trip. So she started with that, Jeanette Heidelwald, you know who she is, and she ran it a few semesters without the trip, because I said to her, if you can get the, the syllabus down in the core readings and the activities and so on, it's easier to add the component of travel versus doing both of them at the same time, so, which I did and it was painful, I can say <laughs> that for sure. So she did that first and this summer, this May, for the first time, her and two more colleagues are going to Germany, southern Germany, and I'm so excited because she's not nervous about the readings and the assignments and the progress of the class, all she had to do was worry about the trip. And then our latest one, two of my colleagues, one, Byron Craig, that came with us last year, the reason that I asked that he come as a faculty liaison was that he could kind of see how it all plays out and then d deliver or develop something in a different country. And that country ended up being Cuba because when we were there last summer, Cuba was still closed within the fall borders have opened, people are welcomed, and we had someone else in the department, Keith Dayton, who has a lot of connections before you know it. So I can proudly say that I've influenced or helped or inspired maybe three of our faculty in my department to be able to do the same because the, the design is pretty much lather, rinse, repeat. You know, it works well. You can keep the same structure and you would just add in different countries. You use your contacts and you progress from there. It's not I know it's easier said than done, but it's not, um, it, it shouldn't be reason to redesign the whole course. So it's something that, I think that's why people are in the school are a little, have an easier time kind of picking it up and taking it somewhere too. So from the very beginning, we meet with students during summer before they arrive on campus for the fall semester. So we get to interact with our direct admit students and we get to tell them about this amazing experience that could be theirs in about a year and a half from the time that we're meeting with them. So from the very beginning, we get to talk about how business can be global and how that can be a real experience in their lives in their sophomore year already. Um, so our unit gets to share the videos that our international programs office has made and just to see their faces light up right away in the summer and picture themselves in these places um, is just really impactful. And I think the opportunities that our staff have had to travel with our students abroad has also shaped how we interact with students in our one-on-one -on -one conversations as we meet with them for the first two years. Mm -hmm. We get to share the experiences we had, and because we are a collaborative unit, we get to share the experiences of other advisors as well as they traveled mm -hmm. to different countries. I actually um, have sort of shifted my role over the time that the Global Foundations uh, Core has been in place. 
And so my new role now is a little bit broader. So I worked previously as a director of international programs. Now I work with student experience, um, which has international programs, or I'm sorry, I work with student experience, which has um, international programs as part of it. But I also work with um, our student engagement team, our honors program, our living learning center. And so it's really been neat for me to pull back and see sort of more broadly how um, students are responding to the, the core and engaging with it. So. Um, from this vantage point that I'm sitting right now, I think something um, that's really special about the way that the Global Foundations Core was constructed is that it targets sophomores. Um, obviously, this was intentional um, to catch them early. But for me, I see our students who um, are, are maybe marginally engaged with the school. We're a large institution, and so um, not every everybody can be in this sort of highly engaged category. But what I see are these students who are um, somewhat engaged with the school going on this program, and when they return, they sort of move into the category of highly engaged. Not always, but most of the time. Um, and I think that's a result of traveling in a small group, getting to know their peers who are in their same class. Actually, in most cases, they're all sophomores um, really well. Traveling with faculty and staff, like you mentioned. Um, so developing some close relationships that are sort of difficult to develop at that level. Um, and so I, I think just a general engagement. Um, and I don't actually know that that was an intentional um, sort of aim of, of the core when it was started. Um, obviously, we were, were looking to educate students about um, the global business world. Um, but this piece for me, working on um, sort of more broader student engagement with Kelly, has been really remarkable. Um, and the, I think probably the most special thing is that because they're just sophomores, they come back and still have two more years to um, sort of share their experiences, integrate them obviously into the classroom, um, remain engaged with the school, their network that they've developed, um, and to sort of make meaning of the experience throughout um, the context of the rest of their courses that they'll be taking here. Mm -hmm. From a departmental perspective in Kelly International Programs, I would say the um, the Global Foundations Core at the sophomore level has now um, exposed so many more students to international business concepts at such an early age that we're seeing more and more students interested in studying abroad for summers or semester programs later in their career. So I think having this exposure early on has um, increased the number and uh, diversity of the population of students who are interested in studying abroad. So for me, in terms of the management and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. department, uh, international business is a very important aspect of our department. We have other areas that we cover in management and entrepreneurship, but uh, since I started here at Kelly, the goal has, has been to make sure that our students get proper grounding in international business. And so the Global Foundations core for the department and for me represented a long-term goal of having all Kelly students mm -hmm. get good grounding in international business. So I think it was a bonus to have not only one introductory course in international business, but right. a set of courses, right. G202, X271, X272. And so for my department, that has meant playing a, a very important role, a yeah. very strong role in terms of the formation of our students mm -hmm. within the Kelly School of Business. Yeah. Being able to be in D270 and then the other courses in the Global Foundations Core made me realize a lot of the considerations that from a business standpoint businesses have when they try to operate abroad or um, on an employee level, what are the considerations that they may make if they go to work somewhere else or um, you know, on a consumer level, what are the needs and wants of people in different places? So I think taking D270 and the following courses in the Global Core made me realize the opportunities and the challenges that lie with doing business abroad or, or even traveling abroad. And so I think um, I'm still excited. The, the Global Core has made me much more excited to consider that, you know, maybe studying abroad or working abroad isn't on the horizon for me. Um, and I think it now I'm more excited because I know a little bit more about what I might be doing and um, the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. So maybe I'm curious, like, what are the stories that the students that you hear hearing about it, yeah. and then they're interested in Kelly because we've got lots of cousins and brothers. Yeah, and <laughs> as uh, as our prospects um, start to do their. Um, 
their school searches and develop the uh, schools that they're ultimately going to apply to, uh, study abroad um, as well as, uh, as international experience is a significant um, interest to them. And as we uh, go to market, we can't just say we offer it and have nothing to go with that. So what we've been doing um, with our X272 trips is we've been creating the materials necessary to, to market and recruit to this generation that needs a multimedia uh, mm -hmm. type of an, uh, of an approach. Um, they don't read mail. Uh, real, reality is, is they don't really read our emails, mm -hmm. um, but the presentations, whether they come to campus for an information session or whether we go to market to them, um, every one of our recruitment uh, materials will have uh, either video um, or mm -hmm. anecdotes from the students, mm -hmm. from somebody who has already purchased this product. Mm -hmm. So somebody that is willing to say, the Kelly School is wonderful. And let me tell you my about story. my experience and my story, because I can't just say, here are all the places we go to. Mm -hmm. and, um, here's and, the and menu. Here's the menu, and, and please, um, please enjoy, and, and, and here's our, mm -hmm. our a la carte choices. Sure. Um, we need our students who've experienced it to tell their stories, but to tell it in the language that our prospective students, who are 16, 17, 18 year olds, mm -hmm. are ready to hear. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been a, a significant undertaking that the marketing department, as well as all of the professors and trip leaders uh, for all of these different experiences, have put together. So we have a portfolio of options, we have a lot of video, um, That's good. and ultimately seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. When you see pictures uh, or student video around uh, the Acropolis, mm -hmm. or around the Taj, or uh, all of our students uh, doing the IU symbols, um, <laughs> Uh, at Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. um, and they they envision themselves there two or three years down the road, but not uh, not unimportant is the parents, mm -hmm. so they True. have to see and envision their child in that experience, mm -hmm. and they have to uh, safety is paramount, mm -hmm. so they have to see that they've got um, they've got a guide uh, as they as they <laughs> head out into the world. They've got um, the Kelly uh, and IU name faculty mm -hmm. and network mm -hmm. and alumni supporting them on the ground. Sure. So it's not, again, it's not a vacation. Sure. This is a real world experience. You know, I, I think uh, I've just been growing and taking uh, opportunities that would get me uncomfortable and out of my comfort zone altogether. Uh, not being scared to, scared to do that and to take those steps. Taking advantage of those opportunities as well. I think my high school self probably wanted to take those opportunities um, but then step back to see what other options were. Um, and also, I would tell myself just to remember that nothing is out of reach, um, to really look for those opportunities. Um, because coming into college, I would have never thought that I would go to Hong Kong. I would have never thought that I would want to be doing international business or that I'd have the opportunity to do international business. What I've noticed, because I get a chance to work with the students in their sophomore year in the Global Foundations Corps, and then I get to see them as juniors and seniors in other higher level international business courses. And so what I noticed is that the students, because of the Global Foundations Corps, were able to, uh, to verbalize, to articulate more mm -hmm. clearly what their interest in international business yeah. was going to be and also uh, to be more clear about their goal for doing a study abroad and where they might want to go yeah. do study abroad for let's say a six month or, or, or longer term uh, tour. So I would say more clarity and better articulation yeah. of, of their international business goals. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. And in terms of from a study abroad perspective, the students that are coming in now who uh, have gone through the Global Foundation Corps in the sophomore year are now starting to explore uh, regions in the world that maybe they wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have considered before. Mm -hmm. So maybe a few years ago we were seeing more and more students interested in going to studying abroad in Western Europe. Now I see more students um, interested in doing business in South Africa or in Asia and interested in, in visiting those countries or studying abroad in those countries thanks to the Global Foundations Core sort of laying that, um, laying that groundwork. Mm -hmm. I think that um, 
I, I mentioned a little bit earlier about how um, we're sort of catching them, them early. Um, I, one thing that I heard a lot of people talk about and I think is pretty common when you um, look at implementing short-term international programs into your sort of portfolio of opportunities is that maybe it will whet their appetite and they'll want to go abroad more. And I think that that is the case and, and um, I can maybe share a little bit more about that later because um, we have seen that um, pretty measurable um, result. But I'm always cautious to, to sort of think of that as the only aim because what I actually have seen are um, some students who maybe wouldn't have considered an international experience before having one. Um, and even those who don't go abroad again, ever, um, I think that might almost be the crown jewel of, of our program, our catching some of these students who wouldn't have had an opportunity before. So um, I think we've been able to do this um, in a couple of ways. I think one, um, the fact that it's highly structured. So um, if, if students have family that maybe um, were concerned about them traveling abroad, it's, uh, it's a really um, easy thing to sort of wrap your arms around and understand what your student's going to be doing. It's, it's 10 days, you go here, the flights are all booked for them, um, and they're going with a, a responsible faculty and staff group of leaders. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the cost um, is something else that's made this really accessible to most students. So the price tag is um, in nearly all cases except for one that's less, uh, we charge a little bit less for Costa Rica, it's $3,000. And so I think um, that feels really accessible to most students, especially because we have even scholarships that can help supplement that. Um, and so um, I, I really think that catching students who um, maybe felt like uh, an international experience was just completely out of reach for them, they couldn't go abroad for a semester or their parents would never support that, um, mm -hmm. it is something that is really a change for us. I think we're seeing um, some movement. I mean, we will, we will always send a lot of students abroad. If we didn't, we were sending a lot of students abroad before this. Um, but I think we're sending different kinds of students abroad now. Um, and like I said, even if those students don't go abroad again, I consider that a huge success because they're coming back and sharing their experiences with their families mm -hmm. um, and with their peers in the classroom. Um, and so I think that's been a, a real shift in um, sort of the way our students think about accessibility uh, to, to international opportunities. I think similar to what you were saying, this opportunity hasn't really been on the radar of students until we can talk to them about what a study abroad opportunity might look like and that short term is a possibility. So if they wanted to pursue two majors and they have a very structured set of curriculum that they need to fit in during their time at Kelly, sometimes a semester doesn't allow for that. However, in your sophomore year, while you're still doing a general curriculum with the rest of the business students, having this opportunity to travel for 10 days has allowed students to go overseas within their degree requirements and within the curriculum. So. A lot of times in our first meetings with students, we ask them, do you want to study abroad? What kind of international experiences do you want? Um, something that fits within our world language and culture requirement at IU. And oftentimes the answer is, no, I can't study abroad. I have these plans and amazing dreams to accomplish a lot within their degree in four years at Kelly. And we get the wonderful experience of getting to share, well, actually, there's a short-term program in your sophomore year that fits within your degree requirements, and we get the opportunity to explain that study abroad can have many different faces. So I think that has impacted students at Kelly as well, and like you said, the scholarships that are available to these students who may have some financial concerns about what a study abroad semester might be like. This is an opportunity to seek out some scholarships at IU to provide this experience um, for these students. I would also say that um, this opportunity is unique in that they're traveling to businesses and getting to meet with business professionals while abroad, whereas a study abroad program might be more of the curriculum and the education side of taking courses at an international university. They're meeting with different boards and CEOs at companies in this experience. So some students may want the study experience and taking classes in an international world and at an international university. And this allows for a curriculum aspect, but also a business visit mm -hmm. aspect as well. So students often find that very exciting.
We talked a little bit about influence on the students overall, but this May, our first cohort that we officially took in Global Foundation Scores is graduating and entering the marketplace. How are they different than the previous two or three years as new employees in a company? Yeah. Uh, I think the easiest way to kind of show the differences among the students that have gone through the G Corps and had uh, an experience like an X272 versus those that uh, were on perhaps the old degree is when our students start here on campus, they're in this brand new university, this brand new school, there's so many different people around them and they're, they're all looking to find somebody that looks like them. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see our, uh, our Chinese students join the Chinese Business Association, mm -hmm. our Jewish students join the Israeli Business Club, and our, uh, our women join the Women in Business, mm -hmm. and whatever that might look like, because you're trying to find somebody that you um, have had a shared experience or a shared upbringing. As students have gone through the core, you're seeing them appreciate differences in culture. And this mm -hmm. idea of inclusivity is playing out in that their students appreciate uh, across different dimensions that before there wasn't a real intentional component to the degree that allowed us to leverage our wonderful diversity mm -hmm. and our wonderful breadth of talent that we bring in. Mm -hmm. As our first students graduate this experience, I'm really excited to hear how they're marketing this experience to mm -hmm. the different companies that, sure. they're, um, that they're vying for, uh, for jobs. This is the item that they put on their resume that is the differentiator but it's also the thing that they want to speak about the most. <laughs> they end up on talking this is, about the this trips. is their experience. Yeah. This is this is something mm -hmm. that is a defined moment, um, not just as part of their undergraduate and or Kelly experience, but the defined moment of their life. The internship in another country um, has been something that like a lot of employers like always ask me about, and I always have something to talk about like in an interview at a career fair at an information session, and it like. It serves as a conversation starter every time, and like a lot of people have gone abroad, and so we start talking about like European experiences or just anything. And how are they different going into the workplace? They're more world aware, and they know what uh, these are. We have big companies that recruit here that may be doing business with countries overseas or have offices overseas, or be selling products to people in different cultures. Our students know what it takes, they're not there yet, but they know what it takes to be uh, a cultural chameleon, to step into a country yeah. and switch their style, yeah. flex their style, because they can't just go one style fits all, this is who I am, I'm a direct speaker. No, you better not be when yeah. you go to Brazil because that's not gonna work there. So they're not, they haven't sharpened the saw yet, but they know that that's what they need to do to be effective. And I don't know of any other experience that could teach them that, so. Yeah. I think there's something very positive in terms of their competence, mm -hmm. you know, and, and their, what they've acquired in terms of international business understanding and competence. Yeah. What I worry a little bit is that some of them are going to enter the w work world and become impatient because not all of their colleagues mm -hmm. or coworkers will have the same level of international business experience. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, I worry a little bit, but I think also that it's a great opportunity for our students to become mentors to mm -hmm. others in their organization yeah. and perhaps even teachers, you know, yeah. and, and I think that that will make them more valuable within their teams and within their organizations as a result of the Global Foundations Corps. Yeah, absolutely. I think that these courses have showcased the opportunities to participate in global businesses. So oftentimes our students are visiting companies that have headquarters here in the US but then also have their headquarters for the European Union or for the Asia market abroad as well so a lot of times the um, business people that our students are meeting with started in the US in like a Chicago or a St. Louis and are now working in Switzerland or in Turkey so I think it has showcased the opportunities for our students to be global business people in that their career may start here in the US but in five years or ten years they could be anywhere in the world mm -hmm. so I think as these students enter the workforce yes they're going to Chicago or St. Louis but that's not 
where they may end up and that's not where um, they may want to be in five years and I think that's just such an amazing opportunity that these students have seen that movement and they know that there's people out there who have done career paths that have led them around the world. So understanding the political, economic, social, and technological trends that are occurring in the world and that are going to affect my business career in the future, as well as any cross-cultural relationships that are and friendships that I'll be part of in the future. And that was incredibly important for interacting on global teams, um, doing projects abroad, and also even just here in the U.S., working with people from different countries and backgrounds, even if it's um, people different from myself in the U.S., understanding diversity of thought, which is incredibly important for our company to be successful. One, I've already um, talked to a couple of our seniors who have accepted positions that will be sort of rotational in nature with um, one of their rotations being outside of the U.S. So I think, um, I think we're already sort of seeing that. Um, students have a fluency in being able to discuss international business, obviously, in interviews and make themselves great candidates to work um, globally right off the bat in, in a few cases. Um, what I'm actually excited about um, is when we have some of our alumni come back um, in the form of recruiters talking to students, um, I think the conversations will be a little bit different. I think up to this point, students have really been in the position of having to educate recruiters or really anyone else who they um, talk to about the Global Foundations core and their experience. Um, nobody really has any context. I think st beginning this, this upcoming year, that will shift. Um, when recruiters come back who are alumni of the program, they'll understand what it means to have participated in one of these courses. I think they'll know that um, it's a special opportunity. The, the students who elected to do um, travel courses as part of the Global Foundations Corps um, really sort of stepped up and, and, and took advantage of opportunities here at Kelly early on. And so I think that, that will be really interesting. And I think that will signal to um, these recruiters who know about the Corps um, that these are special students um, who, ha who have taken on these um, unique opportunities and um, they really might be poised for some, um, some work outside the U.S. or at least dealing with um, issues and, and problems in the company that are global in nature. I think the, the, the introduction of an international experience early on in the education um, sophomore year is important for our students as a whole. If a student waits till their junior year to be introduced to the idea of, um, mm. of learning in another culture or in another country, it might be too late. Their major might not allow them to, their internship might not allow them to, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Having this influence early in the degree allows students to really explore whether this fits into their um, into their experience as a whole mm -hmm. as they build their customizable degree in essence um, the timing is really the uh, very very important component of making sure that students have this as an option mm -hmm. when I think of the significance of this because it's such um active learning and it's not just you can't measure it with the multiple choice question um, the first thing that I have seen happen is they have a much heightened awareness they have told me you know I, I opened the Wall Street Journal and I want to hear what's happening in Europe but what did the uh, European or the IMF rule on what's happening in Greece or Portugal or whatever because they understand it um, the the second piece is is a higher sense of understanding why there may be differences. We talk about different is not deficient like the sea urchin, but why is it different and where is this coming from? Is there historical influence? Is there differences in culture, high and low context? How How is this um, different and, and do I understand it? And then finally, I've seen a much heightened level of appreciation Maybe Greece is more philosophical. Maybe uh, it's the students there that when they meet with them, I'll never forget this. We bring them together with students, and one of the Greek students said to one of our American students, Are you happy? That's a question that your grandpa asks you, Are you happy? You know, here's a 19 year old in Greece, very different viewpoint on life, different philosophy. And our student, the whole time back on the bus, like he asked me if I was happy. I've never thought about that question. So they sat there and had this deep conversation. 
and the level of appreciation for someone their age that has a different life viewpoint is amazing to me. We cannot do that unless we put boots on the ground. We certainly can, can you know, I'd say even the students that don't get to travel that are exposed to this, I'm uh, vigilant about them reading international news, uh, about reading European newspapers, and I always have, they have to read the English uh, spoken Greek newspapers to see the same topic from a different perspective. But that level of appreciation for a different philosophy of life does not come f unless they have those conversations. So I think the great thing about the Global Foundations Corps is that it affords students the opportunity to uh, have an international experience uh, at the short term, so mm -hmm. a seven to nine day study tour with a faculty member. Mm -hmm. um, so this has um, allowed more and more students to consider the international experience, students who maybe weren't considering going abroad for an entire semester. So through the Global Foundations Corps, I've seen a more diverse population of students, first generation students, athletes, for example, who couldn't go abroad for an entire semester, now choosing to have that international experience at the sophomore level. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the most significant result has been that, you know, international business is no longer mysterious mm -hmm. or exotic. It's just mm -hmm. the reality of yeah. a very sort of global and interconnected business world. And so I think the students are better prepared. They're mm -hmm. better able to hit the ground running, mm -hmm. I think, when, when they look toward uh, a, an interview for, uh, for final employment. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that the Global Foundations Corps being um, uh, integrated into the, the, the curriculum really sends a message to all of Kelly's stakeholders, um, so students, parents, um, faculty, staff, our recruiters and, and corporate partners, that global is not optional um, here at Kelly. Uh, it's not an add-on. It's not something that um, if, if you're into that kind of thing, maybe you would do it. It really um, is integral to success as a business person and um, that's why we're requiring all students to do it. I think uh, it will be interesting actually once we graduate this first year. Um, nobody knows any different now. So uh, we're actually in that, that place right now. There's no older students before them who, who had global as sort of an option and, and now these students don't. Everybody um, sort of enters with this expectation that it's, it's a required part of their success as a, a young business person. Having some aspect of international business and being able to understand it's impossible just to be in one place and be able to work by yourself. Uh, at some point in your career, you're going to have to work with people in other countries, be able to work with other cultures. And I think the Global Foundations Corps is critical to being able to have that foundation to prepare yourself for those steps in your career. I think there's two sides. One you alluded to earlier is the connection of students to their peers. Um, so students that have traveled about abroad with this program often still meet regularly, um, go out to dinner at local restaurants and reminisce about their time that they spent in country um, as well as the curriculum and the course that they went through. Um, so I think it's connected students to their um, peers and people that have shared this moment with them in their life that was often a turning point in deciding what majors to pursue or what uh, career to go into later down the road. Um, these have been their um, people that they go to now um, since sophomore year. So it's had the student impact and I think it's also had a curriculum impact in that it's um, been able to promote our international business major mm -hmm. a little more in that these students have a thirst for adding on more international mm -hmm. courses. So um, as this is called the Global Foundations Corps, this is only the foundation, but there's the next level that these students can pursue, which is a major in international business. And I think it's allowed more conversations to happen about adding on that major and what that means for their career path to pursue a curriculum beyond their foundation, but into more advanced international business theories and aspects of business. It affects all of who you are, not just your the student that you are or the business person that you are. So for instance, you learn something in a tax class and that is, you know, down the line will affect you as a tax accountant, you know, per se. And but the global core affects every part of who you are. It is 
it changes the way you think, it changes the way you act, it changes, it's, it's more than just um, technical knowledge that you learn in a textbook, it's, uh, it changes your mindset and it affects everything moving forward. Well, thank you for joining us for this discussion of the Global Foundations Core. If you happen to have any more questions about this video, um, questions for us or suggestions on other topics you would like to learn more about, please contact Cyber at cyber at indiana.edu.